We can't change what other people say or do. We can teach people how to treat us around our loss. I wish I'd known this a lot earlier. So, yeah. I don't know yeah. why that made me very <laughs> emotional to hear. I, this is a very odd experience. <laughs> it's like, well, it's, it's so like, you know, real. It's like there is yeah. a book, but like, it's so true. And like, it's like, yeah. I'm feeling right now for a younger version of myself, almost like an inner child. And I'm like, I, yeah. I know yeah. you wish you knew that, you know, then. So, but I, I think that is such an important thing because there's such an awkwardness around grief, around both how to support people and how to ask for the support you need, especially right. when you're swirling in grief and you don't even know what support looks like, you know? And that's why, again, it's like this, this going back to the present moment of what does support look like for you in this moment, in mm -hmm. this second? Because sometimes mm -hmm. we also don't want to answer that question because they think, maybe if I say something, then if they complete that, I'm supposed to be better. And I don't ever want to set mm -hmm. up that expectation, right? So it's like, if you're supporting someone, you know, people ask me over and over again, like, what should I do? Or what should I say? And I just, I think casseroles and condolences are like, you know, what we've been taught and so great, but it became like, always being touched and always sort of it felt like a stamp was being stamped on me going, sorry for your loss, sorry for your loss. Like, I can't imagine what you're going through. Like, and, and there was nothing in that, that, or even how are you can be so overwhelming. So over what, like, I don't know how I am, you know, it's not even, how are you feeling in, in North America? We say, how are you? Which is also just <laughs> right. doesn't, you know, um, so, you know, or how are you doing? And it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm flailing, you know, and I know there's only a certain amount of time before I need to start treading strategically because I'm not getting out of this water. Like that's what's becoming clearer and clearer with every second is like, I can't reverse this and I'm in this water, this grief now. So, you know, I really love to empower that, you know, my book is written for the griever, but we do teach people how to treat us. And people will ask, like, you know, what would be best? And those are your, your kind of moments, those teachable moments to say, you know, uh, resilience responses, like what I call them in the book is, is sort yeah. of reframing things and helping people to help you. So, you know, you know, what would really help right now is this, or I don't really know, and I don't want to know, but I think I would like you to be in the room and not talk. And that's one that I use a lot because I never said that, but that's what I always wanted to say. I have a tendency to ruminate and I'm trying to oh, in overdrive, understand what's happened in my life. But I also am very aware that that's not healthy to do all day, every day. So I don't want to be alone, but I don't want to be touched. So I want someone to sit in the room and it's like so specific, but when I really tapped into it the third time around, you know, just because of what happened to me, I kind of had to ask for what I really needed. And, you know, we have like adopted this term in our family, like a pocket pal, like in it, you know, they kind of come over and do what you're doing during the day. And it's not a thing, but you have someone else there, you know, and all of my very good friends and close family members know exactly what that means. It's like, can we have a pocket pal day where you're just there and we don't have to talk about it, but we're also not going to ignore it. We're honoring it by you being in the space because I want someone in the space, you know? So yeah, I think it's really diving into that question for yourself. And there's a tendency, and even in like a lot of the grief world right now to sort of attack the supporters because they don't know how to support and you know the things they say and like I get that and it's very frustrating and there's another week where you can honor all the anger you want um, <laughs> and find a healthy outlet for that but also there's a little bit of responsibility that unfortunately comes with grief you know you are entering a club and there your life is different now and you know it's like I hate like I hate that it's like wait I have to do this I have to do more I'm the one who lost someone and it's like yeah if you if you want to enjoy your life at all yeah there's going to be some things to do here and some tools to develop and you're going to kind of you know constantly have to just be honoring what's what's going on yeah wow um that idea of I love how you put it I don't, I, your presence in the room is enough. Like I don't want to be touched or, or even spoken to perhaps resonates so much with me. So, and, and I think, as you also say, in, in alignment with building the skill set, different people, well, different days, different moments, different situations might call for us to want 
to be spoken to or touched mm -hmm. or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Others may not. And being able to, this is why your the check-in practices are so useful is, and, and later in the book. So I'm just laughing because I want to remind everyone because yeah. this thing happened where people will say to this day, oh, uh -huh. Addison doesn't like to be touched even before <laughs> people. And, and I now, because I wasn't checking in with myself, as you're saying, and I wasn't keeping it loose uh -huh. to what I really wanted. I made hard rules when I was younger because I didn't know, I didn't know any of this. Right. So it was yes. like, it became no one's allowed to touch me, which was very detrimental to going through the next 10 years of, because <laughs> I did want to be hugged, but then I didn't want to awkwardly like have to bring it back in. So then no mm. one was touching me and I, I did want, you know, and so it is always of the moment and that, that is a bravery. And that is something that, so I'm saying you'll always have the opportunity opportunity to teach people how to treat you it's not one lecture it's not one yeah. set of rules yeah. you know it's always in the moment and be careful because you you know people think they're helping by then telling everyone else in the world don't touch him and it's like <laughs> well no I literally as a human being need like oxytocin and like you know yeah, to be touched yeah, yeah. you know especially through all this process and I think I'm a whole thing 10 years later I worked through with a life coach of like breaking down this Addison doesn't like to be touched limited <laughs> belief that I created you know so you know, I always like to find the funny in it. And so when something like that pops up, it's like, you know, yeah, just be honest in each moment what it is because hard and fast rules, again, don't don't serve you, you know, mm -hmm. maybe for a period of time, but not not always for the, the whole run, you know? Mm. Yeah, that's such a nice reflection. 